Good afternoon, good evening, or early in the morning, depending on what part of the world you're tuning in from. Tom Matson here with Chris Mason, uh, my co-host and partner in crime from Titans Marketing. We are honored to have you here enjoying our amazing speakers throughout the day. We are 14 speakers done. Number 15 is about to start. Super excited. And you're in for a treat, everyone. Glad that you are here. This is the Survive and Thrive or Crash and Burn Direct Marketing Success Summit. I'm glad that you could join us. Our next speaker is the author of the fourth edition of The Ultimate Guide to Facebook Advertising. So he must be the best because like he wrote The Ultimate Guide. He has previously published the official Get Rich Guide to Information Marketing on the Internet, Big Ticket E-Commerce, and the Best Business Card on the Planet. He has the uncanny ability to pull a person's story out of their head and heart and engineer that into highly responsive ads and creative. He uses this ability as the co-founder of Feed Stories, a video production and marketing company that serves many diverse clients. 22 years in digital marketing, served thousands of clients and industry leaders such as Dan Kennedy, Bill Glazer, Ali Brown, and Perry Marshall. Uh, lives in the south sub suburbs of Chicago, so he says go White Sox here. Yeah. Uh, I don't south know if we side. can- Yeah, south side, south side. A happily married to his high school sweetheart and two amazing daughters. In the winter months, he's a high school basketball coach at his alma mater in Palos Heights, Illinois. Yeah. Um, he is going to talk about the three pillars of a successful Facebook advertising campaign. Bob, Bob Regeneris, Regener, how do you say that? Regeneris. Bob Regeneris. Welcome. So glad you're here, Bob. So glad to be here, Tom, Chris. Good to uh, see everybody. And I think if I'm looking at the participant list, I see some familiar names. So that's good. I got some friends who showed up. Um, hope it's been a great day for you guys. Um, it's uh, the sun is coming out. So that must mean it is going to be a great presentation. So I got about uh, 25 minutes, Tom. So we got 25 total, including questions. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to, we're going to rip through this thing because this is really good stuff and I hope people get a lot out of it. Um, this is a new presentation. I've kind of refined some things based on what's going on. So hopefully you all enjoy it. There's my contact information if you need it, but let's go ahead and get into the meat of the content. So you are going to learn um, how to build highly responsive Facebook ad campaigns that deliver the right content at the right time to the right audience. And I'm gonna get my clock going just so I make sure I stay on time. Uh, the concept is called deep funnel marketing. It is what I talk about in the ultimate guide to Facebook advertising. Deep funnel marketing is basically to magically appear at the right time in the newsfeed with just the right content user needs to see. What you want to happen as a result of this is that when somebody ends up giving you money and doing business with you is that they say, my goodness, you are everywhere. And that is the reaction that most of my clients get, which is that they appear to be seen everywhere. And in reality, it's just a well-timed, well-focused uh, approach within the Facebook newsfeed. Okay, concept of deep funnel marketing is in the name. We do not want to be shallow. We want to go deep. Most marketers want to just throw an ad out and get a bunch of sales. And that is not how I approach marketing. Um, I tend to approach it from the standpoint of let's dig a deep canyon. Let's let that river meander for a while and let's build something a lot more grand. Um, you could dig a trench with your hand in a couple of seconds. Obviously, it takes a river quite a lot of time to actually uh, build something as grand as the canyon that you see there. Um, and I want to let you know that this works for any type of product, but it is really essential for big ticket items that are expensive or complex. I wrote this book in 2008, and I did not have the technology available to me to be able to do the types of things that we can now do, uh, which is really exciting. But I will to say this, now that we have Facebook and Instagram, um, it is perfectly suited for those types of platforms. So um, we use this uh, day in and day out to sell these types of things, checks, clothing, headbands, medical devices, software, iPhone apps, supplements, dirt. Yes, we have helped somebody sell dirt, uh, coaching, consulting, tax and finance, seminars, books, online tra training, masterminds, newsletters, uh, you name it. 
Um, we have been able to sell a lot of things for our clients using this methodology and it works like gangbusters. This is all powered by retargeting. We all know what this is. We visit a website and within seconds after going back on Facebook, we see an ad from that same company. So if you go to a, uh, you go to a website that sells running shoes, you look at a particular brand, you go back on Facebook 20 minutes later, you're looking at your phone and there's an ad for those exact same shoes with the 20% uh, percent off coupon to encourage you to buy those. That's what retargeting is. We all know it, we've all seen it, uh, but it has only been around for a short amount of time. Uh, but in internet years, it's been around for, the, for a long time. It is powered by what's called the Facebook Pixel. Now, if you don't know what the Pixel is, I need you to go ahead and do a search for it. Even if you are not currently running Facebook ads, if you are doing any sort of inbound marketing to your website, you want to have the Pixel installed for two reasons. Number one is you will eventually run some Facebook ads once you get the courage or you work with somebody like me or read a book or something like that. Uh, but secondly is you want to start giving uh, Facebook the ability to learn things about your visitors. It's really critical because it's going to allow you to do things not only to retarget those folks, but create models and give Facebook intelligence about people that visit your site and purchase from you. So it's critical right now to get your pixel installed. If, if there's anything that, if you are not doing any sort of advertising on Facebook right now, I want you to at least get your pixel set up and it's really, really critical that you do so because this is what powers everything. And oh, by the way, you notice here, it's not just for Facebook advertising. The Facebook pixel is there for all types of inbound marketing. So if you're doing a big SEO push, if you're a really good content marketer or blogger, and you get a lot of organic traffic to your site, you should be pixeling that traffic. If you're primarily doing Google AdWords or an email marketing or anything like that, all that traffic is something that you could target and, and, and use uh, in Facebook advertising. All right, so go ahead and get that done. All right, let's jump into the pillars, okay? The first pillar is time. Time is really critical here. I want to introduce you to something. You may have seen this before if you're a student of marketing, but this is called the Customer Awareness Timeline. It's a concept that Eugene Schwartz came up with in his book from 1966 called Breakthrough Advertising. And I believe you can get that from, uh, from Brian at, I think it's... Uh, I think it's an expensive book. It's probably around $100, $125. Um, you, can, you can message Chris and he could give you a link to that. Uh, I believe Brian has copies of the book. But this whole idea of where are my customers on the timeline, okay? They go from unaware, so they, they're unaware that you exist. They, have, they don't know they have a problem. Or they don't have something right now that they want to fulfill, okay? Then it moves to problem aware. Uh, they've got a problem. They need to solve it. Solution aware, they're aware of solutions to their problem. You're solution aware. They become aware that you are a possible solution. And then most aware, they've narrowed their choice to a few providers, including you. One of the biggest mistakes that most advertisers make is that they are advertising down here. If you can see my arrow, they're advertising to your solution aware or most aware when the person isn't even aware that they exist. So if you have a conversion issue, most likely what you are trying to do is advertise your business to people who are unaware and you're acting as if they're aware of you and they're aware of the solutions you provide. It's also one of the biggest differences between Google advertising and Facebook advertising. When people go to the Google, they go to the search box, they type in a problem. Most likely they are looking for an answer to a problem, okay? They are already problem aware. Facebook is an interruption mechanism. People are unaware, okay? They're there catching up with friends and family, they're watching videos, they're doing something other than searching for an answer to a problem. You are interrupting them but you also cannot assume, again, that they are aware of a problem when you run an ad. So think about if you're an experienced Google advertiser and you're going to shift, 
to Facebook, or if you had been advertising on Facebook and not having those issues, one of the diagnostics that you wanna check is, are my ads targeted to where people are at on their timeline? Okay, so in reality is that most ads are over here and that most times deep funnel is required. You must move people along and very rarely is it a single ad. Now we've all seen these diagrams before, top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. We've all seen this uh, describing an advertising uh, platform, okay? We move people at the top, a cold audience, probably number, numbering in the millions, okay? Maybe we show them a, a video ad and we get thousands of people to watch it. Out of those thousands, maybe we get hundreds of people to look and go to our website, and then maybe we get buyers, okay? From millions to thousands to hundreds to tens. That's how marketing works in terms of the funnel concept. And if we take the timeline and we move it to a vertical, it's from unaware to your solution aware. Okay, second thing we wanna talk about is audiences. Okay, audiences are simply lists that you can create within Facebook to use for both targeting and modeling. Okay, Facebook has the ability to create what are called custom audiences. All right, so these are some of the types of audiences you can create. Customers, all right, these are both lists of customers and prospects. In fact, it's any sort of outside list that you, uplo that you upload. Website custom audiences, based on pages people visit powered by the Facebook pixel. Video custom audiences. This is for people who never leave Facebook or Instagram, but those videos actually are tracked. So Facebook is able to connect um, and create custom audiences of people that watch your videos. And then engagement. So people who, uh, based on their engagement. If they engage with your post or your page on Facebook or Instagram, Facebook can track those. That's not all the audiences you can create, but it's the ones that are, are most important or ones that you would be most uh, using most often. The second type of audiences are lookalike audiences. All right, lookalike audiences are, are artificially uh, created, machine created lists of people that are based on a model of any custom audience. So one of uh, the strategies that you should be considering at all times is uploading a list of your customers to Facebook and creating a lookalike audience. Because if we're looking to produce more customers uh, in our business, the best model for that is our current customers, all right? So one of the strategies we do with every client uh, any of my coaching clients is, do you have a customer list and have you created a lookalike audience? Now, we could also model our prospects, okay? Um, if you are a lead generation company, people that opt in and give you an email address is a great audience to model. Um, if you don't have a large customer list, if you don't have a big prospect list, um, people who visit your website and visit and, and modeling and uh, modeling the top visitors, um, you can do that within Facebook. And then the third is what most people default to, which is interest audiences. Um, this is kind of what people understand about targeting is we're aggregating demographic and psychographic data. Uh, Facebook knows about its users. So fans of U2 um, or you know, fans of Oprah Winfrey, you, know, you could target those things. You could say uh, they're between the ages of 24 and 35 years old. Um, you could say they live in Austin, Texas, or you know, all those types of things. All those dials are available to us, and it's another way to create audiences to target ads to. Okay. Now, going a little bit deeper with you here, let's think about how do we, how do we figure out where our prospect is on this diagram, okay? Whether it's top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, or more specifically from unaware to solution aware. Well, bottom of the funnel, um, there are signals, okay? Somebody that visits your order page, somebody that adds something to a cart if you're an e-commerce store, or initiates a checkout. Um, they spend a lot of time on your site. They visit very frequently, or they've become a lead. Those are signals that they are at the bottom of the funnel, 
okay? And your advertising should um, cater to them. Middle of funnel, what are the signals there? Well, maybe there's some certain landing pages that are key. Maybe you have an advertisement that drives to um, a webinar page or a key piece of content. Uh, people that watch 95% or more of your video are definitely engaged with you. Uh, people who comment or share a post um, or visit your page frequently. Uh, maybe they've downloaded a white paper. Those, those are engaging signals that indicate to me that they're in the middle of my funnel. And the top of the funnel, right? This is your cold audience, people that you are targeting. Um, basic, lookalikes and interests. Those are the two that you're really gonna focus in on when it comes to audience. Let me give you a little bit of an example here. This is a, um, that's a little bit of, I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. Okay. So pillar three is content. All right. So bottom of funnel content. So remember, they've given us a signal that they're at the bottom of the funnel. So what type of ads are we going to run for bottom of funnel? Well, we can run things like testimonials. We can run uh, videos or articles that are specific answers to their objections. Uh, we could run things like offers or discounts. Uh, we can run case studies, all right? That's the type of content we'll put in the bottom of the funnel. So here's an example of one, all right? This is uh, one of my clients uh, sells checks, okay? He's a Canadian uh, check printer. And one of the strategies we use is to offer a, a discount. Now, the 25% off discount, that's pretty generous, okay? Converts like gangbusters but there's no sense in me running that ad at top of the funnel because why should I give everybody a discount, okay? This is only for people that get through to the bottom of the funnel and for whatever reason decide not to check out. This is a fantastic, highly converting ad and you have a return on ad spend of this, you know, somewhere north of 25 to one. So for every dollar that we spend on this ad bottom of the funnel, it generates at minimum $25, okay? Real effective ad. Um, here's some middle of funnel of ads, all right? Um, you can run testimonials in the bottom of funnel or middle of funnel. Um, this is an ad for one of our clients. We use testimonials for that, okay? And then I wanna go back. Looks like I had a slide out of, out of context here. Here's another one. This is an FAQ. Um, this client sells a device that helps deal with EMF radiation. And so we have some FAQs that run middle of funnel for that. So sorry, those were a little bit out of order, okay? Uh, but middle of funnel content, again, FAQs, demos, explainers, topics, um, those are all things that you want to run middle of the funnel. Uh, here's another one, this is another example. Um, this is a uh, kind of a testimonial, um, it, our client's actually explaining what we do at Feed Stories. It's a really effective way to do those types of things. And then top of funnel content, these are articles, blog posts, um, videos. Um, one of the tips that I have for people is to show, don't sell. Um, a lot of people want to, again, wrongly assume that they can just put a product in front of their audience and they're gonna buy it. Um, we like to filter our audiences at top of funnel. So we have audiences of hundreds of thousands and millions. We like to have our content uh, filter people down. So we use our content to give, uh, we, we let them give us the signal by watching our videos, by visiting our landing pages. That's how um, they tell us that they're engaged with us. So um, this is uh, my co-founder in Feed Stories, Brandon. We have some top of funnel videos. Uh, we have a service called testimonials.live. So we have, you know, why are testimonials the most effective tool? Uh, so we run that ad top of funnel to bring new prospects in. Uh, here's another client. They sell a moth uh, prevention system, basically moth traps. Uh, we lead with content at the top of the funnel. Um, it's an article about how to have moth, uh, stop moths from eating clothes. So obviously if somebody reads this article, um, they're either a, aware of this topic or they may have this issue. Um, you know, if somebody has moss, maybe what they're going to do is go to Google first, but this is a way to capture people on Facebook top of funnel uh, with your content. 
So I kind of ripped through this. It's normally about a 35 minute presentation, guys, but I wanted to leave plenty of time for questions and I have not been looking at the chat box. So Chris or Tom, I would love to be able to answer any questions that folks have in regards to Facebook advertising. Yeah, this is awesome. This is awesome. Um, yeah, I don't see any questions here in the, the Q&A, guys. If you want to pop questions for uh, for Bob. Oh, I got lots for Bob, not to worry. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Fire away. I love collaboration. So so, so the, uh, the different strategies of the different tiers of the funnels, um, you know, most of us, once we start playing with Facebook, we hire agencies. And uh, we're, Chris and I were just talking during one of the green rooms, like, wouldn't it be nice to know whether our agency did this training or did this training and, <laughs> you know, like that sort of stuff. Because it, a lot of times they try and present it as a magic box. Um, and one of the things that's been happening lately, not just with our agency, but with a bunch of them is ads that were getting approved normally are now getting rejected like crazy by Facebook. And we're told, this is normal. This is what's happening. They get on the phone with Facebook because they have a good enough relationship to do that. Facebook, you know, quote unquote, apologizes and then lets it, you know, go right again. But this is happening like dozens and dozens and dozens of times right now. Yeah. Um, is that is that your experience or is she, are they blowing smoke up my butt? <laughs> Question number um, one. <laughs> one of the things that we've seen, especially in the last couple months since um, kind of the, the situation in the world has hit, is that Facebook's um, automated censorship tools have gone into hyperdrive in some case overdrive. Mm. So a lot of ads that are rejected are, it's, it's really innocent. So you go through the channels to get them approved. Um, so I, I have seen in several of my clients where there's something in the wording and we can't always tell what it is, trips, something with the automated um, rejection tool. And it's just a matter of, you know, going back, and and um like like you you can you can appeal it so you go yeah. into, it's an automated process the yeah, other they're issue, going though, through the process and getting that yeah. overturned so that's good to hear actually that's yeah. kind of comforting to hear that yeah. so the next question then um one of our one of our clients is doing a big book launch and mm -hmm. our book launch raises money for a charity and take takes half the proceeds to the charity and half the proceeds to traffic buying we call it a strategic philanthropy book launch Facebook is going nuts at the charity component hmm. in the ads. And they're basically saying, yep, no, it's triggering all of our stuff. No, you got to change your ads. They're not, they're not saying, okay, well, that was a mistake. They're saying, no, we don't. And this is a 501c3 that's been around for years, feeds 3.6 million kids so far. And we're like, how can that be bad news in the world today? Like, how is that? How is that? You know, it's not Russians spying on our election or anything. So uh, have you had any experience in the charitable endeavor world right now with Facebook ads? I, I have worked with several charities. I have not had those issues specifically related to that. Um, it's interesting. We'd have to kind of go under the hood and figure out what's going on there. Okay. That's definitely a perplexing one. We don't ever want to try to um, assume that we know more than Facebook, right? Right. Um, it, they're, they're the judge, jury, and executioner. I have noticed. Quite often it quite often we have to like apologize and, Oh, I don't know. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Uh, and most of the times it's innocent, but you know, marketers do like to push the envelope. So they, they tend to put in more restrictions than, uh, than we would care to have, but it's, it's, it's really to keep the bad guys out. Um, I haven't seen too many cases where we were in the right and Facebook still rejected it. I, I've had one case where I'm still perplexed as to why they would not let this person advertise anymore. But I do know that it was in a market segment that has now kind of been shut down at Google as well. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay. And just a quick uh, tactical question, Google tag versus pixel, Facebook pixels, any difference? Um, the Google pixel and Facebook pixel are different. Google Tag Manager is a way for you to manage all your tags and scripts and things together. So your Google Tag Manager, you're a fan of? Yeah, I'm. I am not an expert at that, um, but yeah, we have we have many clients that use Google Tag Manager. Um, but yeah, it's it's a way to kind of keep all the the chaos managed. Cool, Chris. Yeah. So one question here from uh, looks like Mick Hill. Are there different types of ads? You mentioned auto swapped out with the Facebook retargeting functionality or 
are separate campaigns used? Um, what's that question, Chris? I'm sorry. Uh, um, yeah, I was just reading through it. Hang on, let me. Are there different types of ads auto swapped out with the Facebook retargeting functionality? Oh, so do you have rotating ads in the same campaign on retargeting or are you setting up different campaigns for each retargeting? Um, we, we use, we, we use a bunch of different creative, um, it, it's not just one ad, um, the presentation, I think, uh, I think there's a link to the bonus. Um, I'll put, I it up put on that screen. in the chat box for everyone. Bob. All right, great. That presentation is about an hour, hour and a half, and it goes into some of those aspects and, you know, it'll explain a little bit more about how to stack different content at different parts of your funnel to, to achieve that result. Got it. And did, uh, you mentioned a, a testimonial service or how does the testimonial service work? That's one of the questions. Here. Oh, if you go to testimonials.live, that will um, go, feel free. It, it's very explanatory there. Okay. Uh, and from Noah, how do you differentiate the campaign objective, reach, traffic, conversion, et cetera, based on where people are at in the customer awareness timeline? Okay. Um, so very, very basically at the top of funnel, um, traffic and video views are objectives you would use. Um, middle of funnel, we typically will go with um, reach or conversion and bottom of funnel will go with reach. Now, if you're a beginning advertiser, you don't know what I just said, um, but to answer Noah's question, that's, that's very basic uh, objectives that we use at different parts of those funnels. Cool. And uh, maybe the last one here, Dan, is there a YouTube pixel also? Uh, no, it's, it's uh, Google uses the, the shared pixel. Okay, so it's the Google pixel for everything. Yep, yep, for all their properties. It's Google Analytics, you know, it's a Google, okay. Google Analytics tag. It uses all that. Got it, got it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. We still got time for a few more questions if any of you have so. Oh, no, we don't. Gosh, we're right past our time limit already. Because next up is Chris, Chris Mason. Chris, you're sooner. gonna close this thing out. <laughs> so well, no, I gotta, Brian's I gotta coming. boot you, man. Chris is coming up. Thank you so much, Bob. Obviously, you know layers and layers and layers, and uh, I always appreciate you know taking wisdom and squishing it down to a short time frame. So thank you for that. It gave us some great perspective, and thanks for investing your time with us. Well, so good to be with you both, and uh, good seeing you again. And uh, best luck to everybody. And uh, thanks again for hosting the summit. It's. Uh, it's going to be real value for people. Thank you very You're much. You're most welcome. Happy to do it. And everyone, Chris Mason himself is coming up. Chris, what are they going to learn if they click on that link and join us? Oh, we're going to learn about uh, local business opportunities uh, for more brick and mortar businesses, how you can actually get customers even if you don't have a website. And even if you're not a local business, I'm going to show you how you can offer this as a service uh, to local businesses in your area. Fantastic. Jump rooms, guys. See you over there.